first PowerPoint tutorial was about creating galleries with picture layouts in PowerPoint Online. Of course, this approach is also applicable to the desktop version of PowerPoint, but here I want to show you another method that leads to results more quickly. This time we don't have to insert pictures separately, instead we make use of a gallery feature, meaning that we can create a whole presentation out of a multiple selection of images. That's how the gallery looks like. As you can see here, the pics are not being cropped like when we applied a picture layout. However, we can realize that on a full screen slide, landscape images take more space than portrait images, which means that they can be displayed with more detail. So in general, you should prefer pictures in a landscape format. In comparison to picture layouts, there's another difference. We can give only one single line of text as an additional information. Should be suffice nevertheless. If you want to add more than one item, just separate them by comma or a vertical bar. So, let me show you how to get there. After I've launched PowerPoint, I choose Blank Presentation. And I use a special tool for importing pictures and placing them automatically on different slides. For this I go to Insert, Photo Album, New Photo Album. And the Import dialog opens up. At first I will select all the pictures to be imported into my presentation. I click on File Disk and I navigate to my Image folder and now I can choose all the pictures at once with a multiple selection. Either by making a selection with the press left mouse button or by keeping the control key pressed and left clicking on single images, or you select one file by left click, hold down the shift key and select another file at the end. That's another possibility for a multiple selection. Finally, I click insert to confirm. Now we see our pictures in form of a list and we could change their order of course, you should place the most convincing references on top. Make sure that you don't just select a picture, but also the checkbox, otherwise the buttons below won't be clickable. In the same way, we can change the direction of a picture. However, be careful that it doesn't work with multiple selected pictures at the same time. In the next step, I will add a subtitle placeholder on every slide, so that the viewer gets some additional information about the reference. As picture layout, I select one picture and check captions below all pictures. So now we're creating our presentation and we notice that PowerPoint automatically sets the background color to black. That would be okay for a presentation on screen, but not for printing. So I go to design and select a blank design with a white background. One more thing is left. I need to edit the text placeholders. As main title, you can choose a keyword like references or some catchy phrase like what can I do for you or something. And the subtitle on the first slide should be filled with your name. As you can see, you can overwrite the text just by selecting it. Let's go further. You see that the pictures are subtitled with the file name and that should be replaced by some information about uh, what type of reference it is, what customer you served, the occasion it was created for and what contribution you made. I prefer vertical bars to separate pieces of information on a US keyboard, the vertical bar can be found next to the big return key. You just need to hold down the shift key simultaneously while pressing the backslash key. At this point, we should save the presentation. You need to know that it's not saved automatically, like in PowerPoint Online. So you need to go to File and either select Save or Save As. There's no difference between both options if you save it for the first time. Actually, one uses the Save As option for saving an existing file under a new name. 
And so we're looking for a folder under Browse. And we're typing in the file name. And for better retrieval, I add the current date, the description references, and my name. I confirm, and I'm actually done, as far as my presentation is intended to be shown on screen. We can test it by pressing the F5 key. Navigation is possible with the left and right arrow keys or by swiping with your finger over a touch screen. You can press escape to leave the presentation mode. Well, now we're prepared for a screen-based presentation in a job interview. For an online application, you should export your presentation as PDF since you cannot predict whether the address C owns PowerPoint at all to open the proprietary file format. In order to export a PDF, I go to File, Export and Create PDF and I click on the corresponding button. Now we see different options to minimize the size of the PDF. And that's important because if you send an application via email, you should make sure that your attachments do not exceed an overall file size of, let's say, 3 megabytes. Let's have a look how the file size is affected by these settings. Selecting our raw image material, we see that it has an overall file size of around 4 megabytes. The size of our safe PowerPoint file is almost the same, but that's a little too much for an online application. So, we go back to the PDF dialog and create a first PDF with standard settings. The PDF is created and opens up. All right. And we continue directly, call the export dialog again. And this time we optimize for minimum size. Let's have a short look. And we create a third PDF. And now we optimize for minimum size. Plus, we open the options, select handouts, and here we leave it at six slides per page. And thus, we get multiple slides on one page. Looks like so. But let's compare the results. The compressed version is around 1.2 megabytes. The minimized version is half as large as the first one. And the last one is just about 300 kilobytes. There is, however, a difference in the level of detail. If we zoom into the third PDF, we notice that there is a loss of sharpness. That's because neighbor pixels are combined to larger pieces, which results in these blurry squares you can see here. Comparing the first two PDFs, the difference is more subtle, but still noticeable. That's the first one. Looks pretty okay. And now the second one. And you see that the left one is more detailed than the right one. And you can see it best if you look at the windows of the skyscraper. So, in the end, you will need to make a compromise between the file size that is still acceptable for your application and the level of detail you need to represent your work adequately. So feel free to experiment with different settings. If, after all, you still struggle with your file size, you better outsource your reference material to a cloud storage service and include a sharing link into your documents. If you want to know how to do that, check out my next tutorial about sharing files online. Maybe you need a printed version for your written application or a job interview, and this can be done in the print menu. Simply click File and Print. For a written application, I would recommend not to put every slide on one page. That's too much paper for the reader along with your CV, certificates, etc. Instead, you should use the handout setting, which enables you to put two or more references on one page. Um, I would recommend two or six slides in a portrait orientation or four slides in a landscape orientation.
full-page printing is suitable for a small audience. The images are big enough to be viewed even from a distance. And this is done best with a table flip chart. With this, pages can be flipped easily and your hands are free for moderation. For full-page printing, you should uncheck scale to fit paper so the pigs are scaled to their biggest possible size. And we have a last look to control the result. Then you click on print and you're done.